Yo, 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 yo! Wagwan, wagwan, wagwan. Yo, fam, what's good? What's popping? Welcome to Cali Vision. You know what? Today's kind of be gonna be like a rerun of yesterday, but in a way that I am gonna show you how I edit videos, in it. Like I'm big on templates. If you've worked with me, if you've that's in like a job capacity, or if you worked with me on a personal level on anything. Man always have templates and workflows. For me, workflows is the way I do life in it. And I'm all about efficiency. So I always look for different ways man can be efficient. And this is no different, you get me? So today, what you're gonna get an insight into is as soon as I've finished recording a video, this is how it all goes down. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking from the DGI, um, from my DJI Pocket 2, um, plugging it into the Mac, you know what I'm saying? And then from there, uh, what happens in regards to editing up the videos? To be honest, I got my hard drive plugged in right now. I'm not gonna move it because ultimately man's in the throes of editing and whoop, whoop, whoop. So I'm, I'm not basically gonna show you the image capture. I lied on that, but I've recorded the whole process of me dicing up the footage, putting pieces together. It's a very simple process. My style is very simple. I don't agonize over hours of it. As soon as I record it, it goes into my system, then it gets uploaded. And you're also gonna get an insight into how I create my thumbnails. And I know I've received a lot of comments and feedbacks in regards to it. You know what I'm saying? So big up, big up everyone that's feeling it and, and all of that stuff. I've decided to go for a more for a more personalized, less sterile approach to my thumbnails, you know what I'm saying? I've always been a writer in terms of graphing or just writing in general. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna use my handwriting. The same way my tattoos have my handwriting is the same way my thumbnails do as well. But enjoy, like, share, comment, subscribe. And if you do learn something out of this or you do have tips on how man can be more efficient and more better, Drop a comment below. You know what I'm saying? Drop a comment below. I use uh, Final Cut Pro for all of my editing needs and I've been using it for a very long time, to be honest. Began on GarageBand, jumped to Final Cut Pro. When I was using a PC computer, I was using like, um, I forgot what software it was because it was so long ago. So what I'm doing at the moment is I am copying all of my branding assets. So everything you see around the video, like the Khalid Omaris or the website or, you know, stuff like that, I'm copying it. And I'm creating the file that I'm going to use. So how to edit my YouTube vlogs. All of my Final Cut projects are created in 4K 25 frames per second. Don't ask me why. It's probably because my brother works in TV and he told me like that's the most compatible in the UK or something. So just created a new file and I've pasted the assets in there and I'm going to create a new one, which is the best kept secret. So what the video I am editing is about, um, you know what I'm saying? So as you can see, I've pasted the assets in there. So everything's in the places where I want it to be in. Now I'm going into my DGI folder. So everything that I transfer from the pocket goes to this special folder. Then when I'm finished editing, I'll bring it somewhere else. So this is me just making sure that the video that I'm about to drag in is the correct video that I'm using. And when I'm satisfied with that, what I've done is copy and pasted that. I don't know what to call it, but it's that blank section. And then I'm going to um, drag the video into between those parts because it allows me to increase the length of the video to the very end. Because I'm, I've copied and pasted all of my assets, right, and there's transitions there, it doesn't allow me to see the beginning of the file. If you know how I can increase that, holler at me, and then you know what I'm saying, it means that I don't have to do this. But it's been working for me for, for a while now, so I'm happy just, just going ahead with it. So ultimately, I've got the video in there and what I'm trying to do is get the best entry point I possibly can. The entry and end point that goes in the intro of my videos. You know, the yo fam was good, was popping, I'm Khalid Omari, like that sort of stuff. Man's trying to find like the, the, the golden part. And then when I've got it, 
I'll just drag it to the beginning. You know what I'm saying? So this is really, you're really witnessing the, how the magic happens on a reel. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it, it certainly oh, yeah, just works for man. In. Welcome to Cali Vision. Yes, man's branding it. I've done so all I've got it muted um, at the moment. So I don't know when or where I'm talking over it. But that's cool. So I've got my intro Iden in there. And then I'm going to start working on um, the second part of the video. You know what I'm saying? Um, so got the intro. Woo, woo, woo. Now I'm going to start looking for the uh, OBS asset. So I pre-recorded the A and B tests. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why I pre-recorded A and B test because I wanted to I wanted to people to know what it sounded like so I recorded it was around about a three minute videos and stuff like that but I think in the end of the editing stage I kept it down to maybe 30 or 45 seconds I say that now but you know who knows I can't even recall but I got the first one in there and um, what you see me doing now is just moving the end of the video of that video on the best kept secret to the end and I'm starting to put transitions in between um, the A and B tests so it seamlessly goes from one to the other one to the other one to the other um, and you just create transitions even if you're copy and pasting it wants to confirm that you want to create that what? transition so as you can see like whether it's uh, 0800 YoFam or any anything else stretching back to up in the air back in the day I've always used the TV static because I'm quite a retro person you know what I'm saying like and uh, that's what it reminds me of, like TV. And this is Cali Vision, so I'm going to have to come correct on that. So I've got the second one in there. What I haven't recorded is me chopping down the video even further. But I thought that's irrelevant because it's obvious that I am doing that between the shots. You know what I'm saying? So at the moment, because of the aspect ratio that OBS has broadcasted or even recorded it at, um, I'm having to edit that in Final Cut Pro and it's a very powerful and easy to use thing and it's something that uh, the software of Final Cut Pro is something that I've picked up on over time but to be honest I keep it simple and I got my way of doing things and it, it just works for me. I discovered something sick the other day and I think... So again uh, as you can see what I've taken is I've taken the branded aspect of the video and I've put it right at the very beginning um, in terms of the where um, you see the whereisko.com coming and the Khalid Omari in the top the right hand corner. I kept that on the aspects where you see me talking as my point of view, right? Because I didn't want to double or even triple uh, the amount of branding that's going on. You know what I'm saying? So at the moment, I'm just testing. Um, I'm doing the end part of the branding. And after that, it should be pretty much finito. You know what I'm saying? That's me talking again, doing my outro. Um, like I said, it's just very simple. Um, I haven't got the software or even... I didn't know in the software how to oh, yeah. highlight, like, oh, you know, you know, when you do the, the, the arrows and the touches and stuff like that. But, so you're you know, you're getting the gist and following on. It's cool. Um, so there we are. So just moving that. And you're seeing how incredibly fast this is. Like, this isn't, this isn't a joke thing. I really do work incredibly fast because I do have a template in place. And this is something that has happened over time because a lot of the time with me, I just like to keep it simple. I like to keep a, a, a workflow. The way I record my vids as well makes it incredibly simple for me to edit at the end because I tend to do everything in one take. I shoot from the hip. So whenever you've seen a video of mine on the, on the YouTube or anything like that, like it's all one take. Um, I don't have any scripts. It's just all one take. I, I remember, I recall times of when I done my podcast. It 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 had a script to a degree, but everything I do is off the cuff, and that's not a brag as well. That's not a brag either. So now I've I've got the video itself in place. I've got the branding in place. Now um, 
I am obviously telling you the story of how I created um, 1012 BC and the secret that I used. So now I'm just putting the covering over the parts um, where um, I am doing the A and B test, just as a reminder to go and check out the project. I'm incredibly proud of 1012 BC and the fact that it's out and available to listen to now. You know what I'm saying? It's quite an accomplishment. It's 12 years, 12 years in the making. But, you know, that's how we do it, man. Cali Vision. So I've moved it into its desired place. And now I'm just making sure that it stretches all across the timeline, right? So any time I'm doing the A and B test, etc., that is superimposed in the bottom right hand Dude, corner. At this moment in time, I noticed that, you know, the where it comes in, it just pops up. So I really like to transition and fade things in and out. And it's so easy on Final Cut Pro. You know what I'm saying? You just go to, say, a view animation. And that allows you to have some parameters where you can change when it fades in and when it fades out. So I'm just making sure that uh, on each project it doesn't crowd it too much. You know, and making sure that it covers the length of each, as you can see. I'm going into the video animation and it that's the parameters. And bearing in mind, if you do have like any Apple device, um, iPad, iOS, Mac, you will have, um, what's it called? iMovie, which pretty much has the same kind of approach as Final Cut. So how Final Cut looks now, iMovie set the precedent for that. So it was simplified. But don't quote me on that. But yeah. So that's it, man. So I'm just testing out the footage, making sure that the intro's A-OK. -okay. You know what I'm saying? As you can see, it's flowing, it's flowing. Yeah. I discovered something sick the other day, and I think it was like the... So that's all good. So now that's finished. And because I was working, a lot of... The stuff has been in there rendering in the background for the length of time it took me to do that. Um, I can export it. So whilst exporting, right, I'm going to create my thumbnail. I don't, I used to like make incredibly sterile ones, but now what I do is pretty much grab a screenshot. Let's see where it lands. Let's see, let's see. All right, nearly. But some of them, because of the frame rate, it doesn't. Yep, that's it. The money shot right there. That says, I've got the secret. You need to know about this secret. Um, so I got that screenshot there. And then what I tend to do is I tend to airdrop all of uh, the assets from the screenshot to my iPad. And the iPad plays such a pivotal role in um in me being able to be flexible and on the move. And in the meantime, while it's been sent to the iPad, I'm going to upload the file now that it's been bounced out of Logic onto uh, YouTube Studio. And as you can see, my subscriber can. It's like 338. Thank you to everyone that has subscribed, that engages with the channel. Like, I've got bare love and respect for you, and I don't take this lightly. Like, follow the journey with uh, Cali Vision. You know what I'm saying? So we're uploading a video and I always create the title. The title is pretty much done from Final Cut Pro. I might edit a bit. I'll add a, subs I'll add a description, um, add it to some playlist, but I always add something to the end screen. And it tends to follow the same flow of my videos. As you can see, I'm in the middle of the picture. That's how I record things. Um, always in the middle. So, you know, my end card end screen on youtube tends to have all of the assets around where i'm sitting and then here we go gonna go for a little schedule but before i do that obviously um i have to check what my current schedule is so i've got a video going out on the first of september so this video would likely drop on the second so i always schedule my stuff 
So you, you might have noticed the increased output rate. I've been on annual leave from work and I've really been trying to, um, you know, pursue my virtues and, you know, do much more of my hobbies. So that's why you've seen me on a current run of maybe seven to nine days. So now that's being uploaded to YouTube um, and I'm going into Procreate. I've got the Apple Pencil and I'm using the iPad mini. Before that, I had the iPad Air, like I said. And I tend to, now that I've airdropped the assets to the canvas, just go in there, insert a photo. There you go. Stretch it to the size of the uh, thumbnail campus or canvas, sorry. And then go in again, add the other asset. I don't, I usually just work with one picture, but I might start taking screenshots depending on what content it is. Uh, got that right there. And now we're going to go into the text. So the text is kind of basic. It is pretty much my handwriting. Like I said, I used to be a bit of a, a, a graph writer in the days. You know what I'm saying? I feel like the Apple Pencil really covers a clear, it gives you clarity with the handwriting. So it's all good. Um, and that's pretty much what it is. And then after I've, I've finished um, adding the text and stuff like that, I'll just do it, do a bit of resizing. And depending on how much I want to make it pop, I may kind of add a little background to it as well. Um, something that highlights the color and makes it stand out a bit more. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I said, if you, if you saw some of my thumbnails from last year, they were really looking professionally done, et cetera, et cetera. And I thought to myself, Ra, I'm not really a professional guy. I'm just someone that does this as a hobby and I'd like to add more of a personal touch. So when I got my iPad and, and, and the Apple Pencil, it allowed me to be more personal with it. You know what I'm saying? You can see from um, the Cali Vision logo, from the Cali Domari, like it's a personal, it's personality. You know what I'm saying? It's me just out here doing a thing. And the good thing about Procreate is I haven't worked out how to use the palette system or anything like that. But I feel like the tools that it gives, I can work my way around it without pulling my hair out too much. I'm just a simple geezer. So as you can see, I'm about to change um, the brush and I might change it to inking um, and I might give, I might keep that color as well. And, you know, I just do, I've started doing these little lines, like little illumination lines. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's nothing out the realm of, of, of something being incredibly simple. But I try to keep it that way. You know what I'm saying? And I feel I'm satisfied with that. That would make a good thumbnail for me. Um, that, that stands out. It pops. You know what I'm saying? It fits my aesthetic as well. Uh, relatively simple. I think the whole thing took me about nine minutes. And yeah, that's me. I'm gone.